So yeah. what's this movie though? The Secret, where it's absolutely like, yeah. yeah. And it you totally imagine that sense. you're in it. <laughs> but that's some of the motivation. Too, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm sure things. Thoughts are things. Yes. If you yes. visualize yes. it every day, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, so yeah, that's Bill Pipes, and literally going to that conference that week changed my life. Wow. Okay, and that's I when I started. That. That's when I came in. That next year, I was uh, Randy's top salesman, um, and then Bob and I kept going back and forth. Yeah. And yeah, that was. That's. That's cool. what got me through a very difficult time. Let's just say. Wow, that's cool. Well, this has been. This is a hurdle for me, so oh, wow. and I'm determined to make it over it. Yes. So. Okay. Yeah, Good. I went for a test on Friday. Had some yesterday, so I got all my results tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to that. Good. Maybe just getting a clean slate with everything. So I'm ready. My husband was like, "You are really going lately, aren't you?" It's like he's like, "I'm ready to see you." I said, "I'm on a mission." <laughs> So, okay. So, as you work your way through, and that's kind of the order of the one on ones, it's basically let's help you start your business. Now that you got clients to help, let's help you use the MLS, help them find some homes. Now that you're looking at homes and stuff, now let's get you familiar with Zip Forms, get you working, get your template set up so that way you'll be ready. Next thing you know, you'll be walking them through the lending process. And then, so you need to know that, then you need to know the escrow process. And then after that, now you need to know the real contracts. So we've got the, the buyer's contract, the listing contract, and then, the, then we just circle back around and kind of okay. fill up your names and stuff. So I'll go back because I'll probably come to these again. Yep. Just once I start over. And then just run through. It's yeah. a revolving nine I'm weeks, so whether you get them or not, we'll be going yeah. through them and they're available. Okay. Yeah. And I'm Like your favorite movie, every time you watch yeah. it, you see something that's like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so here we go. Um, so, cool. so to begin with, yes. Uh, when it comes to the buyer's contract, okay, okay. you're going to learn there are four parts to it that are going to be mandatory no matter what. There's going to be stuff on top of that that you may or may not use, but the very basics of your offer are pretty much four fundamental things, okay? So, number one, and you, you could, these aren't in any particular order, okay? So let's call this the offer. Okay, so, um, if you look at your list, uh, your little uh, let's see here, Mom, go ahead, because I'm not sure, Sam, this is your first experience, this is your first exposure to the contract, truly, yes, right? Okay, is. cool. Yeah, so it's go ahead and just throw out the answers as you know to kind of to help guide her through them. Because right, number one, I've got the answer. Because okay. <laughs> you have number one, your actual offer. That one makes sense, right? That's your nine page purchase contract. Okay. So and it is the uh, what is it? Um, actual buyer attachment, what do they call uh -huh, it? But it's uh, called the contract. residential yep. uh, the purchase contract. Yep. So your res purchase contract. Okay. Now that is the actual contract contract. There's a couple of things we put on to it that are number one, to protect you, and number two, to protect the brokerage and a few other things, okay? So the next thing that you'll want to have on every single offer is what we call the R-E-A-D-E. -E. Yep, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? So the, the ready form is what they call it. Yeah. It's the agency mm -hmm. form. Right. Okay? And agency will go both ways. So when you're submitting an offer for a purchase contract, you'll just check the boxes that you're representing the buyer. If you're representing the seller, you'll have the exact same one. Only you check the box saying you represent the seller. Okay. Okay? All right. And if you're really good, you'll represent both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now okay. you sell your home and buy a new one. All right. Okay? Now, the next one is, thank you, follow the market. We now have to have this document on every single one, again, on both sides, okay? Yep. And it is the market conditions. And if you want, what's so cool is that all of those are here. Yep. 
Yep. Oh, okay. So yeah, we're going to go through all of them. Is it, these for, is it the first four pages? Uh, uh, you have your buyer broker. Uh, yep, that's this, this next, the next one. Yep. Okay. okay, now this next one I did say was mandatory, <laughs> <laughs> but it's technically not. It should be in our world, and if you're, if a good agent help, it helps to will. protect you. Okay, this is our, this is our legal standing. It will prevent you from getting screwed. Okay, you, there are certain clients you'll be working with for months and months and months, taking hours and hours and hours, showing them 50 homes, and then all of a sudden they don't return a call, and you found out they went and bought them with another realtor. That's you have recourse. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> and that's basically it. Or let's say on the flip side, you have somebody that is being a real and big booger. First one. Right? And you're that's just not one. getting along. Yeah. Okay. You could basically release them and say, hey, if you, here's another realtor. Okay. Um, if you want to work with them, we've already worked out a deal. <laughs> you know, or if somebody oh, says, I hate you, I want to work with somebody else, you'd be like, mm -hmm. okay, have right. that realtor call me, no problem. Here we go. You know, it's it's your only backing, and that is the buyer broker agreement. Okay. And the other thing that's nice, the way it's set up, it'll tell you like how many pages, so oh, that you'll okay. know. You know, okay, I only have two pages. Thank goodness, you know. But like like with the purchase agreement, it, it tells you it is pages one of ten. One of ten. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah, like the attention buyer. This is the cover sheet, technically, for that. Right. Okay, the cover sheet for this. Okay. And Got Josh it. will address that and he'll tell you why that sheet is important. Okay. Yeah. okay. Perfect. All right. Okay. So that is the basics of an offer. All right. Technically speaking, you can get away with that. Technically. Mm -hmm. Okay. This shows that you're working with uh, um, certain parties and will basically guarantee you're going to get paid in the long run for your role in this transaction. Mm -hmm. And then this protects you because the market goes up, the market goes down. All we can do is make the best decision we can based on the information we have today. That's all yeah. we can do. And you know what's cool is one of our other lending partners always posts like a little little video thingy. And he says today, he says, I'm just letting you know, isn't it cool, that the interest rates went back down. Well, they've gone back up. And according to the powers that be this year, so he says now, you know, so I'm letting you know now is a good time to buy. Because knowing that it's going to be going up sometime this year, it's like 10 go up the time So a little tidbits, it's, it's like I thought it was going to stay it's down. It's like, no, it, it, it varies still like, hourly. Yeah, it's but it's still, it's still oh, like in the mid fours, you know, it's below, I say it's below five. So I give them good news, it's below five. Okay. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, five, so. Historically speaking, do you know like okay when the prime when the peak happened? Okay. Do you know where interest rates were at that moment? Uh, wasn't it like seven <laughs> percent? Right. Historically speaking, what is the average mortgage rate? Right now? No. Historically speaking, what oh, is the historic. average? Oh, historic. Yeah. Like five it? in the fives? No, no, it's, it's been higher, higher it's in the eights. Say, oh, in the eights. Historically speaking, your average okay. is in the eights. Okay. Thank you, like 1980s when it was like 16, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. really high then. Yeah. 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 So even right now, people are like, oh my gosh, 4 and 5%. We're, that's only because we're so, we were, we were blessed with a 2% interest rate. Oh. Ask our grandparents if they ever got to experience a 2% interest yeah. rate. No. I only oh, got to experience no. that when I went through HAMP. <laughs> when we, when we, <laughs> when the when HAMP we moved program. back yeah. here to Arizona in the early 90s, I think our interest rate on our home there on Grover's was 11%. There you go. Wow. So yeah, I was when like, I bought yeah. yeah. my house in 2002, I was at 8 and a quarter. I think yeah. I got dude, the fun line. I was like, you're too. But it was like 2002. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So even now, we just it's all about perspective, and that's part of our role is to help people with perspective. You know, yeah, four and a half sucks compared to three, yeah. but three in the course of history was about this big of a period. So compared to eight, five, six, seven, seventeen, we're still doing fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now that we know these, let me just throw out a few other ideas for you, just so you're familiar with just your train of thought. Okay. When you're helping a client. Any feature that's out of the norm probably will need an addendum, okay? okay. Such as uh, a pool. Okay. There's there's a pool addendum. Mm -hmm. You got safety. You got doors, windows, fences. Every city varies based on how you're supposed to drain your pool. There's a lot of factors that people would think about. So there there's a pool packet. 
Okay? okay. For example, HOA. Okay. If your home was in the 80s or prior, probably not. But pretty much everything 1990s or later is in an HOA. So there's probably there's an HOA addendum. And it spells okay. out the monthly fees, the contact information mm -hmm. for the HOA, right? Okay. Uh, oh, here, throughout the Black Canyon City once. This is, okay, this is just pure, this is an average home in Black Canyon City, okay? So you have to do your uh, septic wastewater, you know, you have to do the um, uh, uh, A lot of people disclosure, uh, let's see, affidavit of the disclosure. You have to do, uh, let's see. But like mother-in-law quarters, that type of thing? Not quite um, that, no. No, 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 no. this, because good, we have a lot of mobile up. homes. Uh, yeah. And then because of the way the water is set up, we it's all well water. Yeah. Oh. And so you have to have the rights of this owner transferred to the... You have the, the well addendum, you have the septic oh, addendum. Wow. And then Black Canyon City is not actually incorporated, so they have their unincorporated part of town, the so affidavit we have disclosure to do the affidavit addendum. Of disclosure. And that's that's pretty much standard for Black Canyon City. They don't do HOAs per se. Yeah, a yeah. septic inspection. Yeah. I, I mean, it's wow. totally different. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to find, depending on your niche and area, you're going to run into things that are the norm for you, which may not necessarily be the norm mm -hmm. for her. You know. Gotcha. And so, for example, uh, Goodyear, Tolleson, uh, not necessarily Tolleson anymore, well, mm -hmm. but Buckeye, all of them. HOAs, you know, almost yeah. every single home is in an HOA yeah, now. every newer, all of the newer neighborhoods. Yep. Yep. Which is the same thing, like, You yeah. have yeah. to know the there you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and if you don't happen to have on your vehicle, in your vehicle, oh, I can give you the flight map um, oh, okay. site. Yeah. Because we are actually, and I'll use the word mandated, that we have in our vehicle a copy of it. Okay. Okay, great. What about, um, gosh, I just thought of something you said. Um, the areas where they have, like, um, cows and oh, know, the smell in the air, that type of thing. Do you have to have a denim for Do that? Do open that? Get a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's one of the conversations. This got brought up last, what was it, last, last week? Last week, I class. brought it up. Uh -huh. um, there's litigation going on with people. I think it, it's in Buckeye, correct? Yes. Yeah, those uh -huh. areas where there's they have Buckeye the and what is it, Guilford or? Uh, well, there's Guilford? A, there's a group that are suing um, for disclosure because no, that is part of your due diligence as a buyer as a whole to do whatever you need or want to do it during your inspection period. Okay. So let's let's continue this here with uh, a few more things. Okay. okay. So these are okay. The map you keep in your car. Okay. These we'll call extras, depending on where you may be, may or may not be needed. Okay. okay. Now you have your disclosure forms in general, right? Which would be your buyer's advisory. Okay. And a lot of people wait to give this to their buyers. But I, I suggest yeah. exactly. This is. One of the biggest things you can give them to show you, you do mean something as an agent. I, I am valuable. Okay, so um, if you can, uh, save this link, okay? And it's the... Um, oh, shit, I brought my laptop. Oh, I didn't even think to bring my laptop with me. I'm sorry. Well, I try to make it so you don't necessarily have to. <laughs> but if you do, it won't, won't okay. hurt. Absolutely. Oh, great. I'll bring it next Okay, so um, you can continue in it as a guest, okay, in this case, right? Right up here at the top, it's under, um, which one is it? Uh, is it under? Manage Risk. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. Buyer's advisory. What is that online? AAR. Arizona Association of Realtors Online. AAR Online. Yep. Okay. And just send them this link. You got, we, um, here in Arizona, we have the Spanish version and the regular version. Okay. Okay. So you can have either. But right here up at the top, see this link? Just copy and paste it. So copy C, and then when you come over and you can open up your email. And let's say you have a new client, for example. This is one of the greatest and simple things that you can do. On your, yeah. Just when you send them, and you can be in Real Geeks or whatever, and you say, uh, uh, let's see, home, buying info or something like that, right? Okay. And then you just send them this link, okay? And I'll send it to you okay. and mom. But basically, you just send it with a uh, just a quick little tidbit, basically saying, um, 
you know, hi there. As you start your journey, there is so much to know. This link will take you oops, take you to the buyer's advisory. It will have anything <laughs> and everything you will want to look up. Okay. Basically, okay. Okay. Um, and then just send that off. Okay. But here's where it actually is. So, it'll take them to here. Now, oh, it's huge. But what's great about this actual link is yeah. notice all of the links, the hyperlinks are yeah. all active. Okay? As if we have the packet in zip forms or whatever we're going to be mm -hmm. using, we, we can send them the, the packet. Okay. But it won't be live links and stuff like right. that. This is the interactive thing that you can send them. And okay. so right off the bat, they can start doing subdivision, fissure information, um, uh, this land, uh, the Motorola Scottsdale, what's it called? Uh, the the uh, something ground, uh, I know what you're saying. Total brain fart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But see, like mom's affidavit of disclosure. You okay. know, if the buyer is purchasing five or few parcels in an undivided thing. <laughs> you know, where the ground can be septic or, you know, have some issues. Contaminated, on. yeah. yeah it's, I, uh, I, I, <laughs> I think I know what you yeah. mean. Um, but like, for example, uh, here you go, you got your pool barrier. Stuff right here too. Um, remodeling new construction. So before you hire, um, what they want to do? If you want to check square footage, you want to check roofs, sewers, water. I mean, that's everything. Soil. There you go. That's it. Uh, well, but there's a term. There's a term for it. Site. Uh, uh, expansive soil. There you go. Thank oh, you. Expansive soil. soil. Yeah. All right. Um, so there's so many things. Death on death and felonies on the properties. So this packet is so valuable, okay? okay. Um, it's technically part of a buyer's due diligence period. Mm -hmm. They're 10 days once they get their inspection. This is part of what we require because on the very last page you'll see they, they sign. sign it. Yep. Okay. okay? So and a lot has to be done within two, 10 days of the home inspection. It's part, um, once you get your offer accepted, According to the Arizona Purchase Contract, you have 10 days for the buyer to do pretty much anything they want. There's some ex um, extras that don't really count, like uh, appraisals and things like that. Okay. But as a whole, that is contractually, that's the buyer's chance to do everything they want. So as a buyer's agent, by the 10th day, I would require them to sign off on this as part of them saying, we've done all the research we're going to do, we're good. Thank okay. you. Gotcha. Okay, cool. I was just going to share, and, and Josh is going to address this, but again, it pulls up and it tells where they can, if they wanted, you know, the, the oh. website, but again, it's yeah. like we're kind of going a little bit beyond by actually providing them providing that, them but them. it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'll be, more like, they'll be more likely to see the email and click right on it yeah. than they would ever to mm -hmm. try to type something like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. want to make sure that they do it. Give them the best mm -hmm. opportunity. Okay. So you have um, the buyer's advisory, um, and then there's going to be a few other things that are just normal, like mold. That's the one I forgot. I knew there was a fourth. No, I was I being a doofus. I was going to tell you a few yeah. things. Yeah. So. For some reason, it wasn't adding up. I'm like, no, there are four on top of the buyer broker. Okay, so the buyer broker should be mandatory, but it's not. Okay. okay? And then we have our mold addendum. Okay. Now, the mold addendum. Thank you. <laughs> Something wasn't right. Uh, the mold addendum, believe it or not, guess where Arizona ranks? 50 states. Mold claims. Number three. Are we number three? I don't know, I'm just guessing. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if we're still number lower. three, but we're our top five. Wow. I would think lower because Arizona's considered like a dry. dry. Yeah. Has to catch. But. Has to catch. Because we're dry, mold is evil in every context. Really? Yeah, and so people will try to cancel because there's mold under a sink. Oh, wow. Okay? Yeah. People freak out about mold. Oh my gosh, mold. Oh my gosh, mold. It's just one of those yeah. things. Now, mold can be dangerous. If you're allergic to it, you can go in an anaphylactic shock and you're you're done. Uh, more, than, more often than not, it's not going to be as serious and it can be remediated and it's not, not a huge deal. For the but, most part. Because for the most part, 
most people are not allergic to it. Okay? But they're good at but, keeping their showers dry, you know, or mm -hmm. keeping their showers clean. Or if there's a, a water issue, you know, of reporting that so that the damage repair, if the repair to the damage is done. East coast, mm -hmm. northwest, southeast, you leave your clothes outside overnight, they get moldy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You go out on your window seal, there's there's mold growing underneath just because of the moisture and the shade. It's well, just, the hurricane, it how the hurricanes, the damage oh, yeah. from the things, water has. Mold is a way of life in other places, right? So you just deal with it as opposed to its existence or not. Right. You know? Right. And so here in Arizona, any existence people freak out about, okay? And I'm not saying that some of them aren't justified. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that every ex example, people will freak out about it, okay? So the way we handle it is the molded denim doesn't say anything. We don't, we're not experts on any of these properties. They come and they go so fast. There's hundreds of thousands of homes around the valley, you know? So we do what we can. So what we say is that during your due diligence, if, you, if we find out anything that says there's either mold or conditions conducive to mold, take them seriously. Do some further research. Have a mold remediator. Have an extra person come out if you want to check it out. Okay? Because people have been sued, and it's more of a CYA for the brokerage, not necessarily to protect them because you'll know if it's serious or not. You'll know if a remediation needs to happen. But people have been sued over ridiculous things pertaining to mold here in Arizona. Oh, wow. It's crazy. Even the, real, the realtor can be sued? Yep. That's why we have these. Okay. And you can th every addendum we have is at least one lawsuit that forced a new page in our contract, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. You know, uh, 30 years ago, the whole purchase contract was not even a, one whole sheet of a legal piece of paper. Now we have our 11-page purchase contract. So what we've done in our forms and documents is we have our mold addendum and stuff. And yep. so, you know, and so as, as you walk through this stuff and you create your templates, you know, you're and what does that, that mold form. addendum say to the client? Right here. You're holding me harmless mm -hmm. if you find mold or like what? Basically, su substantial the attention has been given to the possible health effects of mold in homes, apartments, etc., etc. The exact is mold, it says, is often not detectable. Basically, it's a CYA for the agent to make sure that we are letting them know that if there is mold, do some due diligence for it. But, and basically. Oh, I see that the broker uh, and agent have no knowledge. Yeah. But basically, we want to, and if they don't have an inspection done, we want to make sure that we are not held responsible for it if there is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. It's, it's, see, that's one of those hairy things because if, if you're allergic and if you have um, a bronchial sensitivity, it can be dangerous. So we can't yeah. deny everybody. But right. the thing is, 75% of people out there are hypochondriac. So let me ask though, is, is it possible that maybe technically we should have it from both the seller and buyer perspective? I do want both. This, yeah. Oh. Because I've always just seen it from the buyer's perspective. Well, overall, okay. Um, it's one of the, it's one of the, uh, how do I say this? The seller disclosure statements. Yeah. Okay. It's part of the spots. Okay. All right, so they don't disclose okay. it here because they're not actually doing inspections. Okay. All right. But that's, that's where when I have a okay. listing, I make sure that they, I go over the top because people, here in Arizona, you're going to find water damage, okay? It, and it's just not even, you're going to find water damage. You're going to hear water damage, buyers will freak out. They just will, okay? Not to get too into it with people, but okay, in the last 25 years, 20 years, let's say. How many toilets have you possibly oh. had to overflow? Oh, yeah. Have you ever left a sink on? Did you ever accidentally <laughs> put your old granddaughter? Did you ever accidentally <laughs> use the wrong dishwasher detergent and have crap come flying oh, out? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Stuff happens. Yeah. Okay, so in the life of a 30 year home, to say that nobody had a flood, it, that's silly. Okay? So be on top of buyers for honesty. Life happens, okay? So the buyer will walk in and they're going to see it and they'll, they'll just see the remnants of a water stain. Mm -hmm. They don't know what it was, why it was. They're but fans. every buyer is going to be like, oh my gosh, they had a flood. There's mold. This house is going to, oh my, there's probably going to be foundation issues. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, because they take yeah. it to an extreme. They will, they will. That's yeah. a buyer's mind. Yeah. And so it's up to the sellers to disclose, oh, oftentimes just to give, oh, that was little Jimmy. Three years ago, he flooded the toilet, or, you know, he left the sink on for an hour. We came in, we took care of it. It's good. You know, disclosing it up front puts a lot of minds at ease. It prevents the wandering. So if mold is say say there was mold or mold is found but on the spuds the seller doesn't put anything there talking about the mold maybe because they didn't know because it's a disclosure statement you're supposed to put what you know mm -hmm. is effective with the property if they don't put it there this covers the agent from any harm because of what the seller didn't put on the spuds right yep okay. it, it it'll basically it'll cover us and it'll also clue the buyer into during their home inspection. Okay. okay. Sellers are sellers. They they we have to just be honest about their capabilities. You're you're a homeowner, okay? Do you know the ins and outs of your AC unit, the ductwork? Okay? Do you know what R value you have in your attic right now? No. Most people <laughs> would, most people wouldn't, right? But it's a, it's amazing how many agents, you know, that do bring the buyer to my seller and they don't include a mold disclosure. Yeah. But again, oh, cool. this is where I have my seller. It's like, you know, just share what you know. Yeah, and that's all we can say is that they can just don't lie and don't hide. Yeah. Okay? If you don't know, you don't know, but you just can't hide stuff in general. So over the course, if they've been at a home for more than five or ten years, I will I will force issue. So I, I can almost guarantee you there has been a toilet that flooded. I can almost guarantee you've had some part of your landscaping go out. You know, there stuff happens. So just go take your time, go through it, right? And when in doubt, over disclose. But the big thing about this as an agent representing the buyer, if let's say you do have the home inspection, okay? And they did say, like you can see that there's they will clue you in. A good inspector will not just say there's water damage, so they'll be like, look, you can tell that there was something here. Did they did they tell you about it? Uh, they can go upstairs and they could actually see well, if you have an upstairs laundry, there's ways to find out if there's been stuff. Um, in a kitchen, yeah, you might have a ring around your island right where the sink is because that's where it's supposed to absorb water. But if you're on the back side of a counter and there's water damage going up the side, that, you know, there's a lot of indications of what might have been a flood, like a real flood. And in Arizona, a, a flood, if not handled properly, can turn into a mold issue very quickly. If you combine 80 degrees, 80% humidity, and just water in general, you're going to get mold. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it's important that things get handled properly. And that is where we truly come in. Because if there was one, we didn't make sure it was going to happen. Okay. Got it. Got it. So it's a team think effort. think about a little spot in my kitchen in the silly city of Phoenix. I went through a program years ago. They came and they did some electrical work and they drove a hole. In my room, and they didn't seal it properly, oh. so I have a little ring. My husband went up there with what's that new black stuff, the flex? Yeah, mm -hmm. flex seal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he went up there with flex seal and fixed it, and you can still see that little brown ring. I'm like, when we go to sell, we either got to scrape that down, paint it, do something. Because, well, the yeah. good news is the mold, once you take away the water, you're good to go. Yeah, you know, if it's right. dry and it never gets wet again, it'll stay dormant forever. Well, I, I, I had a, a situation where I had the buyer, and so when the inspection came in, he could tell that where the pool was, and when they would drain the pool, um, it actually wasn't allowed, they didn't fix it so that it drained at the street. They had it actually drain right at the fence, and so then the water went out right here, and so it started to go underneath where their garage was. And you could see where the crack was in the garage. Yeah. And so Steve was sharing, he says, this is not a, a big issue now, but you can <laughs> see the makings of stuff that says, if you don't redirect your water here, you know, that yeah. it's, and so again, it was a situation. Yeah. And so my, my buyer had to decide, was this worth pushing to, the seller to fix? Or is this a, an easy fix for you because he's sharing it's not a, an issue now, but if you don't fix it, it will be. Yeah. And that's the big judgment call we have as agents because a lot of things are serious, mm -hmm. 
but aren't either expensive or do it right now, the house is going to fall apart. Right? Landscaping, in my opinion, is almost a bigger issue than mold as a whole. Yeah, I agree. Okay? Because, because landscaper, yeah. there is no landscaper out here. Uh, well, I can't say none. The vast majority are not experts on drainage. They're, they do stuff. Yeah. They just put stuff in. And that's what they do. And it looks nice. They but they don't really that. think drainage. And you're going to find most homes have drainage that actually goes back towards the house. Oh, yeah. Just randomly. And this is from yeah. a builder. Like, yeah. you're getting the home with bad drainage already. And then you bring in a landscaper who puts in more stuff that looks cool. And chances are. And so French drains, for example, are very cheap. And they're very good at what they do. You know, you can put in a French drain for several hundred dollars, usually. Yeah. And yeah. It'll, it'll take care of most drainage toward, away from my house. You know, lots of, lots of silly things. But... Yeah, that drainage is a huge one. Um, there was the one horror story about a, a, another one, a pool person, but it was the neighbor's house. Oh, yes. They didn't even have a pool, the neighbor did, and the neighbor was backwashing his pool into his neighbor's yard. Oh, okay. And it wasn't until about like 15 years later that the neighbor started getting foundation issues, and they couldn't figure out why. And then come to find out, it was the water seeping in across and coming into that side of the house. And oh, wow. Isn't it crazy? Jeez. Yeah. There are a lot of things. So I was just doing my continuing education, and when you get to some of those parts, they talk about all the lawsuits that happen. Yeah, the yeah. disclosures. Yeah. It's just oh my gosh. gosh. So this is where um, when you when you um, attend the basic zip forms for right now, but we're going to switch it over ASAP to the other one. Um, we'll walk you through putting all these documents you will need into your template, so you'll come prepared with every buyer. Okay. Okay, it's not going to be a, oh my gosh, you know, you'll come over prepared and be like, I don't need this one. <laughs> you know, that's okay. the better way to go out. But if, you, if I can give you like a heads up and stuff, um, the, the new uh, format that's taking the place of Zitorms is called Instanet, or for us here in Arizona, it's called Transaction, transaction Desk. That's a hard one to say. <laughs> Mark your calendar for May 30th. Okay. Because we oh, right got here. them. Hello? Something going on there. I'll be in California. I'll be in California May 3rd. I'll leave the 27th and I won't be back until like I think oh, the 4th. Okay. Alright. Oh. Well, we've got okay. some other trainings, but I was just thinking we're gonna be, before, we're gonna be three times yeah. between yeah. now and the end of the year. Okay, so okay. we're all good. Yeah. I'll be at the next one. Okay. Yeah. That's oh, I'm taking my granddaughter oh, good to for you. taking my granddaughter to Disneyland. Oh. Not land. Are we going to Disneyland? My That's cute. <laughs> she says Disney Lamb. <laughs> she's, oh, the, wow. she's been being promised this since she could talk that she's going to Disney Lamb for her birthday. It's June 3rd. Mine's June 1st. Uh, but we're going to take that week after Memorial Day oh, off. Oh, that is and wonderful. And we're going to spend five of those days in California. Right, <laughs> so, Do you need a nurse? I'm excited. Like, oh, we're back in California. Yeah, just need their own baby. But the next one, I'll be there. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's actually, um, with what time we have left, let's actually dive into okay. the contract and get as far as we can through it. Okay. And, um, you know, as you need, obviously, as you come up, up to stuff, we'll make sure you're prepared. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm That's definitely going to, well, I have a couple now. They're just a rental, but they are ready to, they're going to be ready and to buy And that's still a kind of, but that's still, yeah. even <laughs> that rental contract is going to be uh, yeah. fun because. And we'll say, we'll yeah. help set up too, because you'll have a listing contract template, a purchase contract template, and then and a, a rental. Lease. Oh, yes. wow. Yeah. Okay. 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 And then eventually yeah. commercial yeah. if you need your, whatever else you might need. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, okay, so let's go ahead and start off with this. So, okay. you got to love e-sign. And here's the catch. Almost everybody does e-sign today, which is wonderful at signing stuff, but doesn't explain anything. Okay? So, most of your clients are actually going to get this, and it's going to have just a bunch of check marks. And... That's my one big fault with eSign is that we're checking things that we're, we're, we're saying we verified with our clients that we probably haven't. Mm. And this is why, if at all possible, and this is part of the practice that we do is I want you to get familiar showing a home to me. Like, give me a plan out and just explain this home to me and its features and try to, try to sell this home to me. That way, once you actually get to the home, it's going to come naturally. 
explain this offer to me, that way you can show me you understand it, and explain it to me, that way you know when you go to speak to a client, you're going to speak knowledgeably about it, right? Okay. And I would like to see that every agent has at least three or four of these, minimum, of before you actually explain it to a client, okay? okay. And so um, what we're going to kind of do differently, and I think this is a good way to go about it, is I'm actually going to pretend you're my client right now, okay. and I'm going to present this offer to you. I'm just going to make up stuff, okay? okay. And then with what, what time we have left, then we can go okay. through and actually talk about stuff, okay? Okay. So, um, so Sammy, I'm so excited. We found you the right I one. know, right? It's awesome. So cool. <laughs> so, uh, one thing that I really want you to know about the Arizona Purchase Contract is that it is so buyer friendly. I'm sure you've heard about Arizona back in the past, you know, it's hard not to. In the 80s, we were like land fraud up the wazoo, we had the Keating, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was pretty crazy. The good news is, because of all of that, it is now the most buyer friendly contract you're going to ever see. So I'm going to point out a bunch of stuff to you that I'm pretty sure is going to make you feel really, really good about buying this home because it is a big deal. And so throughout this process, there's about six or seven things that are going to take care of you and protect you along the way as we go through it, okay? okay? So right on the back, you'll see right on the top, it's this, attention buyer. So we're going to go through all of these things to make sure that you know what what's going on in this contract, okay? So if you want, go ahead and keep that cover, cover um, sheet aside, and then as we kind of go through stuff, you'll refer back to it, okay? Okay. So... Um, it says obviously right there on top, read the contract before you sign it. So if you do want to before I have you do anything, absolutely. But um, if you're comfortable, go ahead and initial as we go through it. It's up to you. Okay. okay. So right off the bat, please make sure on that first page there that your name is right. Obviously, we want to make sure, and so you'll be looking at the first page here. Okay. Be like, okay, so make sure I did enter your name, Sammy Smith, etc. And I'm then, right on this as well. Yep, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and then I would actually have the listing over here, like the plano, okay. and then I would have the tax records next to it. Is the plano the same as the detail? Exactly, yes. The MLS? Exactly. Okay. We old, we old <laughs> okay. folks are the cold plano still, yes. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, I always kind of make a joke, and you're going to find that, cater it to your sense of humor, I'm sure you're going to make it a fun process too, okay? Yeah. And people are much, they just like... They have fun with it, right? So uh, make sure your name, and please make sure we have the right address there. So you have the tax records here and there. So we want to make sure you're buying the right property. You know, that would just suck to not to think you're buying one house and find out it's another. So make sure these two line up. Perfect. Okay. And then you go down and make sure the price is there that you discussed, right? And then you break down the numbers. So here's the cool, here's the main thing that the real math you're going to have to figure out, okay? So you'll see line 10, 11, 12, and 13. Okay, so line 10 is the full purchase price. So, how much is the home you want to buy? Uh, 340000 Okay, so we're going to offer 340 All right, now, line 11 says earnest money, okay? You will always have earnest money, and even a VA loan that is buying with no money down should have at least $500 in earnest money. Okay, that is the, that's for the seller. The sellers are trusting that the buyer is going to come through with this purchase. If they don't, they took this home off the market, they had monthly bills, they had a bunch of stuff that they're going to be out of. Okay. okay? So, so if it, it doesn't sell, you have to pay that. It, well, if, if they cancel outside of the due diligences and all that stuff, which there are four or five rightful ways to cancel and get your money back. Okay. It's if you don't do it properly, then yes, the sellers would rightfully be due something. You know what I mean? Okay. okay. So in a typical case, and this there's no there is no right or wrong answer. Okay. In, in a heightened market, trying to give your buyer extra clout, you would give as much earnest money as they'd be comfortable with. Okay. In a sell in a buyer's market, it's like let's try to get away with as little as possible, <laughs> right? Five. The general and one cents. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the general rule I use is one percent. Okay. So like an example like this, I would round it. Either three thousand, thirty-five hundred. You find when you do thirty-four hundred, you start doing some odd math numbers. So try to keep them round numbers. Okay. Ish, okay. Right. So like on this one right now, I would say like thirty-five hundred. Okay. Okay. Earnest money. Okay. Now the down payment 
is going to be based oftentimes on their loan, right? Yes. So a VA loan, they can put no money down. They can put $10,000 down, kind of whatever they would like to do. A VA, I mean, a FHA loan, what's the big selling point? 3%. 3.5%. Oh, 3.5%. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was three. Three and a half. Now, there's a conventional that now will try to beat it with a 3%. Uh -huh. So there is a 3% one, yes. Okay. Okay, but yeah, FHA, 3.5%. So that's the math you're going to have to figure out. Okay, so if we're offering three hundred and forty thousand dollars, what would be best? So three, four, um, about nine. Let's see, nine thousand. Eleven thousand nine hundred. Eleven thousand nine hundred would be three and a half percent. Okay. So we're putting an earnest deposit down, which is part of that down payment. Okay. It's not just extra money on top of that they're putting down. It is towards their down payment or closing costs, whatever it might be. Okay, so thirty-five hundred. So let's take away the ninety, uh, the thirty-five hundred from the eleven thousand. So that means our total down payment at close of escrow, which is line twelve. Would that be line twelve? Yes. Yes. Okay. Line twelve. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So you have the total purchase price, then you have the earnest money here, and then you have the down payment. And so you could say earnest money, and that's what the line will say. And then you could say deposited, you know, with at escrow or something like that, right? Now, when they give that to you, do you, um, I say they write me the check for 3500 that comes to you when you deposit that until the end. Of escrow. Is that how that works? Uh, nope, not we, quite. Oh, yes. There's going to be another way that better protects Here's, you. And oh. everybody involved. Okay. Under no circumstances should you or I have to hold any money for anybody. Oh, okay. Okay. That is the <laughs> ideal way we go about it. Okay. Uh, right now, the wow. easiest thing to do is that they would just either um, to deposit that money directly to title. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, the line 17, which we're almost oh, wait, done before, to. We, before we go, so yeah. down payment would be, so on line 12, I would put the 11,900, and then mm -hmm. line 13. Oh, is we're not there yet. Yeah, oh, oh, sorry, okay. I was just answering your quick question there. So I'll say earnest money is in the form of personal check, wire transfer, or whatever, right? Okay. And then it says upon acceptance, earnest money will be deposited with. The SRO company. Yeah. Okay. So go to land title or wherever. Exactly. And more often than not, they will send somebody to your client uh -huh. to grab the to money anyway. Because okay. this is where, okay. again, if they're agreeable with whatever, because I mean, they get to choose, you know, who they want to use for escrow. But, oh. you know, if you have somebody, it's like, you know, this has been a great person to work with, you know, and they say yeah. yes, then I call them to say, all right. Uh, can you arrange to have a courier come over because they've got the earnest money? Here's the contract because the, and then they're going to start And they get a receipt price. and do yes. all that. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Yeah, when you get your offer accepted, you'll basically send one email out to mm -hmm. the lender, like your client's lender, escrow, your client, contract coordinator, mom, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. okay. with the all the documents. The contact information for your clients, and you'll say congratulations, we got a new escrow, and you'll say escrow officer, here, you know, contact them to pick up their money. Lender, here's a copy of the contract. Let us know if you need anything, and basically done. Yeah, okay. it makes it easy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So then, yes. So then you have here's the total down payment, right between the two, your earnest deposit and your down payment. Okay. And now you have the difference. So what? is the difference that we're actually financing, actually. All right, so that's going to actually be 340 minus 11, what did I say, 9? 11, 9. Yeah. 328,100. Okay. So then you just put there on the next one, 328, was it 900? One, no, 100. 100, 100. sorry. That's line 12. Yep. And then you'll say financed, and then you'll basically say yeah. right here, um, you'll just write in the total amount, oh, sorry. Okay, so we got the total, the down payment. Okay, mm -hmm. so eleven nine. So oh, eleven nine should, should have been here. Well, right, you got the down. I just wrote that in there. Okay, so you got yeah, your earnest money, which is the thirty five, mm -hmm. and then the eleven nine minus the thirty five hundred. Okay, which, which is the eighty four hundred. Yep, be on line twelve. Because you want the yeah. three of those to total the full purchase yeah. price. Okay. You want these two to equal the down payment total that okay. they're going to put down. Okay. And then you want the three of these to equal the total purchase price. Gotcha. Okay. So, and then you'll say here financing. You'll just say basically finance conventional loan, VA loan, FHA loan, 
you know, whatever, you just write your little description. You know, you could say, uh, the actual thing that I would write here, let's just say uh, it's a conventional one. Financed conventionally. And that goes on the line across from line 13. Yep, exactly. Yep. Okay. You and just write a little description of what it is, where it is, just something. 328 100 and then financed. Yep. Or you could say finance via FHA loan, finance via VA loan, hard money loan, cash. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and the only difference here is that cash. It's, it's much more streamlined, okay? So in cash, instead of having an earnest deposit and a down payment and then financing, they're only gonna come in with an earnest money and then they will come in at closing with the balance of whatever's due. So in other words, okay. line 12 will reflect, for example, if I have the 3,500, then I'm gonna say that the, the rest of the, the yeah. difference you between- You just came in with the other 330, what, six, five. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> and then it's, uh, you know, cash to be... Um, cash to close the escrow. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, a line 12, a line 13 wouldn't exist. It would just right. exactly. default to line 12. Exactly. They were ca and then you write cash. Cash to close the escrow. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cash to close the escrow. Okay. Yeah. Quick and easy. We like cash. <laughs> yeah. And we have not nearly as much math. So you just... Verify your math by doing the 328.1 plus the 8400 plus the 3500 should equal the total purchase price if all goes well. Okay. <laughs> all right. So that that's the fun part of the contract. COE. Okay. Cash COE. Yeah. I don't want it totally over because yeah, you'll you'll come across it when it's time. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now, the legal description is actually the most important part, so that's what I wanted to um, point out. Make sure that you are including the whole um, legal description. From so, the MLS listing, just grab it from there. Exactly. So, like, for example, um, this was the house that my client, this agent, put in the wrong date, so it came back to market, and he didn't mean to. Oh. Which really bummed out my client, because he saw it go under contract two weeks ago, <laughs> and he got all excited. And so, no, um, sorry, we're not going to go see it tomorrow. It's really not available. <laughs> but right here under Monsoon, this is our tax records. Okay. And more often than not, given it's not like a huge parcel, you'll see the, the entire legal description right here. And what's nice about what we do is that you can basically just copy, boom, and then come over to zip forms and just paste it right in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. You're going to find, though, that some land, for example, has a legal description that is a page long, in which case you will Do include an addendum to put it on. Okay. Sometimes you will run out of space. Number one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right? Okay. So, earnest money, I always say my clients are mostly out of state. Okay? For example, like Mel's in California, etc. So, most of my people aren't local, so they just wire. If you are local, Personal check is definitely easier and it's less expensive. So I would say personal check there. If are you from California or are you just advertise in California? Oh, is we're. Friends yeah, we're. I don't know. We're not from California, but that's a big he part of our family. He technically was oh. born in Arizona. So he's an oh. Arizonian. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was born in Lake Havasu. Okay, but you uh, you lived in California for years. For a lot of years. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And you'll find that um, we work with a lot of people who come from places that it's not quite as good to invest where they're at. So we have a lot of Californians, we have a lot of New York people, we have Canadians. Um, we, we're getting a lot of Asians right now because it's just, it's a good time. Um, you know what, I, it was Seattle, funny you said Washington. Asians because um, my good friend just moved here from Michigan. She's working at Honeywell. And she says like 80% of the employees there are Asian. She's working for Honeywell, and they are recruiting. Like she's in New Mexico right now for nine months. They're closing plants down. They're going to be opening more here. Yeah. So a lot of people are going to be migrating. So she's going to get oh, some business. That's a big loss. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But you know, just just a little thing, by the way. It, you know, if you have somebody like in an, a, another state, what's cool is if if you have the ability, like, to pull up. 
uh, agents maybe in that area and you can do like a yeah. referral fee. Refer so a say home. like even though my client is in another state and they yeah. need to sell their house, it's like let's help find somebody that can help you out. And oh. then, you know, it develops the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. 25% over there and the sale over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's neat. Okay. Yeah, plus if you have a good business, um, B2B is huge and Honeywell is a great yeah. one to be in. Yeah. That, the, those are, what, overall I would say they're mid to upper paying mm -hmm. jobs for the most part. Oh, yeah. And yeah. those are homeowners. Um, a lot of my best clients are from Lockheed and things like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so if you can get in with them and they're reload yeah. comp they're reload yeah. people. Yeah, because my sister, she got a whole relocation package yeah. here. Well, she's staying in a hotel. Yeah. She was here in a hotel for two weeks. Now she's in a really nice one out there in New Mexico. Yeah. And she'll be coming back. Okay. I'm looking for a house, I'm going to help her too. Oh. <laughs> and, we, and we can set up yeah. like relocation packages for people. Like we, mm -hmm. all you do is yeah, you, you basically get a deal with a, you get a deal with a hotel, you get a deal with a movie company, and basically just guarantee certain rates of business. It's, it's not what it's going to do. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Just try to make it a seamless move for them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Get a pot of me, B. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So uh, you got your wire transfer, your um, um, escrow company. Now, standard close of escrows. Uh, what are yeah, no, the real, really, really fast yeah. though? Line nineteen and twenty. If it is a cash deal, uh, you just have to have proof of funds. Yep. Okay. So oh, yeah. Well, that yeah, okay. that'll come just so, a second. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah. So this is all cash, letter of credit, um, source of funds, exactly. So um, now close of escrow. I keep I have a hard time because I start presenting and then I go back into teaching mode and it's hard going back and forth. So, um, yeah, this is hard to just present. Like, I need to just have a client presenting, and we have that laid out oh, that's front. True. That's that, true. that way that's I'm dealing true. with that, and yeah. we can come back and talk about the others. Okay, close of escrow. Okay. okay. Kind of depends on the situation and the market. Okay? okay. So, right now, let's say you have a normal sale. Just a normal, everything goes well, uh, financed deal. What's your standard time? Close of escrow. Somewhere between there. Yeah, exactly. Thirty normal up to forty-five allowed. That's on the longer side, but it's within normal. Exactly. Okay. Now, if you have a cash deal, what's expected? Two. Oh. <laughs> now. Two weeks. And it, it could go. It could be within one week. Um, we've done it before. The only problem is now with HOAs, you're stuck waiting on them and their documents, yeah. and they have up to ten days to give them to you. Oh, okay. so yeah. So if if all goes well, you can open escrow Monday and close on Friday. Yep. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Um. Now, right in this market, you have a lot of contingencies. Okay. Yeah. So that's turning into one of my documents over here, unfortunately, because in order to buy this home over here, they need my to sell this house. one. Exactly. Well, that's going to be my situation. Now, yeah. the other thing that's cool is is at least what I have found is if I end up putting say like forty five days. On my, uh, I have, there's a place down here, uh, and Mike and Josh will take you there, that I will say that close of escrow to be on or before. Oh. So we do have the ability yeah. to close. a little close earlier everything. for everything close yes. as well. Yes. Yep. Yes. 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 Just need to be on title yes. company yes. and things like yes. that because they will go with the date specified unless told otherwise. Okay. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. Okay. I so my mortgage days. <laughs> so if you do have a contingency, what is the normal timeline on that one? Oh, I would think forty-five days. Sixty, close. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And the That's way awesome. that typically works, okay. the way that typically works is that'll give you thirty days to get your home under contract, and then another thirty days to close on both. Okay. 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 So really, this it's a thirty-day escrow. This is my situation right now. <laughs> so it's sixty days, but it's really a thirty-day escrow. So you really, the time, the clock is on to sell your home. That's it, right? I what, if you, what if you go into contract like that and your home doesn't sell that fast? That's another thing I was worried about. That's the well, and that is you have to renew knowledge. The contract again? Well, that's the knowledge of the market. Yeah. Number one, a seller, if they think you're overpricing your home and it won't sell probably won't accept it. They're going to want to ensure you priced it fairly at, at a price they think you will sell in the time allotted. Okay. So gotcha. you see it's just there's more factors involved with making sure because um, my clients 
uh, the smokes, when they put their offer in, that listing agent wanted to know my incremental price drop plan just in case. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so if it's not sold within a week, you're going to drop a five grand, right? Exactly. <laughs> and I have a situation oh, where boy. the gal needed to sell her home in Michigan in order to close for her home in Surprise. And so in working with her agent back there, it's kind of like, um, based on how the market is there, what do you think? Because yeah. it made a big difference as to the date that we put for the closing here. Yeah. Oh, and it sucks when you're dealing with out-of-state people and you have no idea about the market and you're just yeah. relying on that other agent. Okay, you said you're going to get it done. <laughs> All right. We're trusting she, you. She yeah. had a go-getter and that week in the house went, she oh, awesome. put it on the market, she did an open house and she found a seller. Oh, that's great. And so that worked out great. But I had another one where uh, they, wa they, wanted, they wanted to sell their house and so then we helped them find another house, but again, the funding had to be done in such a way that we closed on the sale of their home in the morning so that we could close on the sale of the yeah. home they bought that afternoon. That's the tail end. Because of the tail. funding, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, it, so it's every transaction is different. Well, yeah. no, the contingencies, mm -hmm. let's not overwhelm totally. Okay, contingencies, that's, that's going to be one of the more complicated mm -hmm. ones because you're, you're, you're literally doing two at once. Yeah. Literally, yeah. you know. And it's when you're relying on something to close on that same day to verify people can move into the next home. It's just a more stressful item. So that will be the most stressful thing you're yeah. probably going to do. Yeah. Is, is it usually like a day apart? So like you close on... No, because then they day all this. Mm -hmm. oh. See, that's the catch. So typically what works, how it works is that you'll close both on the same day. But if, if all goes well, the buyer will have a day or two to be able to move their stuff out of their other house. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, because one the closing, that's it. You have exactly. the keys open. Yeah. yeah. So California you're finding more and more because of just how expensive things are and funding might take a day or two, in which case you can have people homeless. So you have an extra three days, like we'll close on the twenty third, but we'll have up to the twenty sixth to move and get everything taken care of. And can that be an addendum or something? Mm -hmm. yeah, because that's sometimes, that's sometimes they have to rent back yeah. from the buyer like a day or so yeah. in order to make that oh. transition into their yeah. new home. So yeah. this is going to be a nightmare. Well, well no, let's oh just. No, it's I'm thinking for myself. I'm just thinking. No, for don't. Myself. It's it's don't really like not that. The big thing is, how do you want to work it? Are you going to yeah. find your new home first? In which yeah. case, you're going to have to sell your home fast. Yeah. Or you could list your home first. And then once you get top dollar for your home, then you go out and find your new home and close on that really fast. You know, okay. just do a yeah, quick yeah, closing, yeah. right? Yeah. So it, it's you just need to know that if you if you're waiting to find your perfect home and then you get your home under contract, you're you're gonna struggle to get top dollar because okay. you you need to sell it, yeah. right? So you'll get you'll you'll get what you can. You know, you you're not gonna undercut it, but you'll get fair you'll get comps, normal comps. Okay. You know, you can't try to push the market. I think you know? that's what the realtor that I have came out was doing. I'm like, $249. I don't think I'm going to get $249 for my house. But he said $249.9. He yeah. was just surprised at how it was for the neighborhood. He was like, this is a really nice house. So he's like, I think you get $249. Nice. I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll well, see. Market, the market's great. So, yeah. But, okay. So, um, so possession, usually it's just going to be standard okay. close of escrow. Ideally, you're not going to write anything weird into there. Um, now, Addendum Incorporated, this is what we were talking about here. So this is all the stuff that we you're going to put into it. Um, HOA, whatnot, you'll see up here that mine naturally oh. says market conditions and mold addendum. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay and that's the all. HOA is automatically checked there. Most of my sales Most have been in HOAs. That's that's the standard thing for me. So see, that, this is my is template, yeah. right? My okay. template has all my extras checked and written in. That way I don't have to redo them every single time. Okay. okay. Saves about 20 minutes per offer. Oh. I have this done. Yeah. Okay? okay. So uh, now let's put ourselves back into the uh, um, you're now my client. So when we get to this next page, uh, the top of page two. Now, Sammy, here's what's kind of me because everybody freaks out that what if they take this? What if they're going to do this? You know, whatnot. This is a whole list of everything that's classified as a fixture. So here's the general rule when it comes to fixtures. 
If the sellers have to unscrew it to take it with them, they're not supposed to take it with them. Okay. Okay? Okay. So that's my little jokey spiel that I have, okay? If they have to unscrew it, take them with them. They're not supposed to take them with them. Okay. <laughs> There's only one caveat to that, and that would be these. Okay. TVs. The TVs. Okay? The, sta the, the wall mount stays. The TV doesn't. Gotcha. Okay? Okay. So um, even drapes, those classify, even though you're not, you don't technically have to unscrew those, yeah. a lot of them are just poles that you... Yes. Yeah. Like my shutters will stay on the Yep. Here yeah. So that and that comes back logically <laughs> now to fixtures. Yeah. Okay. okay. Microwaves usually built in. Yeah. Stoves, the well, they should have the anti-tip bracket, yeah. which makes them attached. Okay. Yeah. Fridges, they're not attached. Washers and dryers, usually not attached. That's so that's why. why in the in the contract you'll see additional okay. existing personal property included: fridge, washer, dryer. Okay, a lot of people don't know what classifies as a fixture or not or why. You know, like right now, um, my client was like, oh, they, they're taking the fridge. What are they? It's like, well, they, they can't. You know, just yeah. like when you sell your home, mm -hmm. you, you don't have to include your fridge. You know, it's up to you. Yeah. Buyers love it. Sellers typically hate moving stuff. So, including stuff works out well for most people. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, so, but that, does that make sense as to why oh, yeah. now that's additional personal property? Yeah, absolutely. Now, you have these automatically checked in your template, but if a seller was saying, I'm, I'm not leaving that, you could, there, you, there's a place you just go into your electronic copy. Oh, so, yeah, yeah literally, it. I could, see right here. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Because the MLS, too, will stay, yeah. stay oh, whether or not, you know, the, wash, the okay. refrigerator, okay. washer and dryers okay. included, yeah. Now, here's, whether, and this is where, to what extent do you want to try to represent and push for your client, okay? As a buyer's agent, more often than not, I will just throw it on there. Just because, mm -hmm. you know, it's if if it says it on there, even if my clients don't want it, I'll I'll just put it on there, because they can sell it, you know, if they don't yeah. want it, just put it on Craigslist. We'll we'll buy it. Who knows? We're always right. looking for <laughs> with property management. Mm -hmm. We're always yeah. looking for because, because yeah. now we yeah. had to have the description. At what point? Because most more times than not, when we've gone looking, you know, I. I'm not taking a picture or I'm not writing down, you know, the model number or, or anything of that. Should we actually kind of get in the habit? Because if I'm showing them homes that fit what they are looking for, I, you know, I should expect them to make an offer. So should I then say, let's go ahead and get the model number and everything? Or should you I can. A picture? I mean, what do you that's say? A tough, that's a tough one. Realistically, you should just go back the moment they accepted your offer. Okay. You know, okay. just to make sure. But right. they that's can switch it at any uh -huh. time. You know, okay. you could you could wait till the home inspection. But who's to say if they're going to be evil people and swap yeah. out appliances that they wouldn't do it prior to that? <laughs> well, you why know? is it a white fridge here? It was a stainless steel. But this is where you could go back to the photos. I've never actually had it switched MLS. out, but yeah. I had one of my clients think they switched it out and almost canceled because he thought they did. But it was the same crappy fridge that was in the <laughs> That was there. No, and that was the tip off was that it didn't have any uh, water or ice in it. And uh, he's like, it did. And it's like, no, it never did. No, it was. Here's proof. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, we went back to the listing pictures and all of them showed an old fridge. Oh, God. Yes. Okay. But yeah, right. I, I would say as early as you can. Okay. But if you, I, I would say it's a little over the top to go into every single home and write, you know, write every <laughs> single serial number down. Right. So, but once you get it, ASAP, if possible. Okay? So, um, and then, yeah, you just write here, um, LG, fridge, stainless steel, whatever it might be, and get as much detail as you can. Okay. okay? Just to be on the safe side. Okay. Um, next, we go into the financing part, and uh, pre-qualification form is attached, okay? And notice that there's no option there, okay? The only other option is if it's a cash deal, okay? So an offer is not an offer without a pre-qual form. They have to show the ability to perform what it is they're offering, and that is by either having the cash or having the pre-qual from the letter. Okay. okay. That's not the same as the uh, LSR, right? LSU? Or loan status report? The LSR oh, doesn't the really exist thing. anymore. It's been updated oh. to the pre-qual slash LSU. Okay. okay. Loan status update. Okay. Oh, yeah. that okay. 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 All right. And then they're going to be required to uh, you as the buyer's agent slash buyer's lender 
uh, will have to provide updates throughout the process of uh, their ability to perform the path. Okay? So, yep. And so your loan contingency. This is where, here you see that they um, escrow company three days prior to COE date. So this would be the first one of the buyer, I'm going to make you feel really good right now, okay? So a lot of people tie in a, an inspection period with appraisal and ability to get a loan. They are different steps throughout the way, okay? So we're going to jump ahead really quick because we're going to run out of time. So you have your 10-day inspection period, okay? During that 10 days, it's your, it's your time to find out everything. If you find out that they're um, such as predators in the neighborhood, you have every right to cancel. If you think that you're able to, um, uh, I don't know, if <laughs> there's so many different examples. I wanted this window to get this type of sunlight and come to find out the neighbor's tree is blocking it. That's not going to work. I mean, it's your house. Whatever you're going to do in the home is up to you. Who's up to anybody else to say that that's an invalid reason and you can't purchase this home for that? So during that 10 days, basically is your time to do whatever, whatever you're going to do. Um, on, the, on the side note, if we find out anything serious, that 10 days is when we would bring somebody back out. So let's say you did a home inspection, found out that there was mold damage about, or water damage potentially years ago. You're concerned, so let's bring out a mold remediator just to be on the safe side. You can do that. Uh, the inspector says the AC is working fine, but it was making clank, 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 clank. We want to bring out an AC person to make sure that it's going to be good before we ask for repairs. <laughs> You're allowed some to do that. Don't still offer like a uh, warranty? Yep. We give you like a home warranty mm -hmm. to like bypass a yeah. lot of this stuff. And As a lister, that's yeah. a great thing to do is talk your sellers into providing home warranty. Mm -hmm. it, it puts a lot of minds at ease. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. And, and the other thing that's kind of cool too uh, about this is is like, you know, once I get the accepted offer and I, you know, call my client and say, congratulations, so I'm going to go ahead and order the inspection. And so I'm going to get my inspection started as soon as possible because that 10 days now, because if there are stuff, I want to be able to have that time frame in order to address those other issues that I'm going to be taking to the seller and my vendor. So if you say order the home, you got the 10 days, like, hey, our order, uh, our offer was accepted, I'm going to get the home inspector out, but the inspector takes two days before they have availability. That comes off of the 10 days? Yeah, and that's normal. Uh -huh. Okay, usually you'll get your offer, okay, uh, it's a 10 days straight, okay? okay. So let's say, um, let's just start off on a Sunday to make it easy, okay? That's day zero. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday... Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, okay. okay. So typically they'll come out on a Tuesday, for example, from here, a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Okay. Typically you'll have the report by Thursday or Friday, and you should be able to respond by here. Okay. Okay, if all goes well. Okay. But you, then you have these extra days just in case you did need to bring somebody else back out. Okay. okay. And then that and during that time, does the seller typically, I'm sorry, the buyer typically call out? I want to go back in there. I would just want to walk around again. I want to go in there. They can. They can. But if the if the seller is still living there, you have to make appointments and all that. They you, want to see it again. You try to be a little again. considerate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, you may not go in every single day, but you know, you may come in like during your inspection here. And then you may come in to do some measurements during this time, and then you'll come in a couple weeks later to verify that they did make all the repairs. You know, you're going to be coming in a few times no matter what, as, final walkthrough. And, and as Chuck, because what, what I have done is that when I've scheduled my inspection, then I let my buyer know when the inspection is going to take place, and I'll say, so if Steve is going to get there at 10, I know that Steve will be through somewhere between 1 and 2. I'll have my buyer, it's like, meet me here at the house at one o'clock and then Steve sits down and he goes with them he says all right these are the things that I found these are things that I might suggest you know that you might want to ask about but I'll give you the full report uh, you'll have it tomorrow and then so at least they kind of have a, an idea of what to anticipate and then when I get my full inspection from Steve, you know, I send it over to my buyer, and then we walk through it, and, and then we discuss what are we going to ask the seller to take care of. Not to get too much into the home inspection part, but um, home inspections are 
scary in and of themselves. And then when when you bring in the inspector's liability too, they have to be very particular about how they frame anything to yeah. make sure that they're not putting themselves up, right? Yeah. And so to leave an own a buyer and an inspector to their own devices is a terrible combination because you'll have a buyer who's already thinking the sellers are hiding stuff and trying to rip them off. <laughs> every every buyer does. That's because you know, and every seller's like they're trying to take advantage of me. You know, yeah, you yeah. put in their perspectives. Okay, yeah. so the buyers, they're gonna see. Oh my gosh. Okay, for example, um, and there's there's three examples that are in every single home. Okay? Yeah, yeah. There's a GFI that's not tripping properly, and and that's the ground fault interrupter. Um, for an outlet, right? So that's what pops to make sure that you don't get electrocuted, you know, when you're next to the faucet, okay. right? Or it's the one that really likes to go when you have a microwave and a blow dryer on at the same time. Oh. That's what happens, yeah. okay? That's yeah. what pops it. So you put the thing, trip it, and you're good. Right. Overall, if that doesn't work properly, it's an electrocution hazard and a fire hazard that needs to be repaired, repaired or replaced by a licensed, licensed electrician, okay? That's a thirty-five dollar outlet that any handyman can fix. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. But on a report, it's an electrocution fire hazard that needs to be replaced by a licensed electrician. Jeez. See the difference? So, yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, this house is on. It's going to catch on fire. We're all going to die. No. And, and we need an electrician to no, come out. You just need right? a new plug with the uh, with the reset on. Yeah. Okay. Wow. There, there's drippy, there's drippy sinks that will need to be that are slow draining sinks that could be indicate indicators of a lot of stuff. Usually it's hair. Usually, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. and it it can be done. But it's it can be um, all the the list that they say basically ends up that it can be a huge issue that you had need to have a licensed plumber come out and do all this work for. Um, there's certain things the AC unit too. Um, it's there's a big difference between working and broken. Okay, <laughs> working can have umpteen number of things saying that aren't perfect, right. but it still works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Compared to being perfect or or not working, you know. Right. And so, and what she was getting at was let the inspector do their job. Go in there, let let them have two hours to inspect the house, focus, find everything wrong. But then, rather than just relying on a report meet with the inspector at the end of the inspection, like Steve, our favorite guy, will spend hours with an owner, with a buyer, at the end of an inspection, walking him through every single thing he found. He will help him put it in perspective, because there's a lot of things that, that can be wrong that don't ever need to be fixed. There's other stuff that don't seem to be that important that will destroy your home if you don't fix it. Yeah, yeah. It could be five bucks, but it'll destroy your home if you don't take care of it. Right. You know, and he'll put it all in perspective. Oh, okay. That's the big part. And yeah. then they'll get the report, and then you you request what you should should request, right? There's no perfect home. There is no perfect home. A brand new home not is not even remotely yeah. perfect. Okay, and so that that's yeah. Having an inspection is key. So yeah, having the inspector, the spuds, that's the whole inspector side. Okay. okay. So right here though, this is where we talk about the loan contingency. So um, basically. You have till three days before a close of escrow for the lender to guarantee that you're going to be able to get these funds and all this stuff. This is outside of your due diligence period. So don't worry about the lender. The lender has his own timeline, which has nothing to do with your inspections. They, you, if, you, if they find out that something happened three days before closing, you'll still get your money back. Okay. Okay? So that's a good one there. All right. For loan, this just ex explanation about how we, how we handle stuff if it's not. Um, interest rate, you know, uh, loan status update, this is what we're talking about. Um, loan application, I'm just going to fly through some stuff here if that's not really pertinent. Um, the next big one is the type of financing. That's where, um, as far as a seller is concerned, okay, you being a buyer's agent, we're on line 97. Being a buyer's agent, the type of financing doesn't necessarily mean much to you, really. Because you're going to help your buyer find the right home. You're going to offer what you're going to offer. Yeah. But it really does affect the sellers on so many levels. Because if you're doing a VA loan, for example, what are the what are the implications for a seller on a VA loan? I guess the time. Uh, it could be. Like the time. It could be. And, and there are certain things that the as the VA, as the vet himself, that the seller has to cover. 
It's a small amount, not much. It's a couple, maybe a couple hundred bucks, maybe. Uh, not the biggest thing. But the other part is, what's the difference between somebody putting no money down on a house and somebody putting 20% down on a house? Oh, I would guess it would be the 20% would be a little more secure uh -huh. if they're going conventional. Um, uh -huh. But they'd have to wait on the government to pay that amount. The government's typically slow. Well, not necessarily. They still get it's, an insure, it's, a, it's an insured loan. Oh. It's not a, the money's not actually just, coming from yeah, the government. The government's so backing yeah. whoever's yeah. providing that money. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay, thanks. thanks. Went from hot to chili. Also. I know, right? It's good to uh, there tonight. Exactly. So, appraisals, right? If right now, our market is going to right? Yeah. So, homes oh, selling today are appraisals. selling for more than they were last month, which was more than the month prior. Yeah. So, if you're trying to get top dollar for your home, would you rather it have you to appraise and a buyer financing 100% of the funds, or would you rather somebody only financing 20, 80%? You know, which one yeah. would the lender prefer? Right. right. Okay. okay. The lender's going to be more conservative on the 100% because they, they're the ones guaranteeing that money. As okay. opposed to conventional, that's 80%. Okay. So that's one aspect. Next is the timeline and the hurdles you're going to have to jump through because condition-wise, okay? FHA, mm -hmm. oh, FHA and VA, they have restrictions on the condition yeah. of a property. And, and the oh, VA, you might have to make repairs. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the VA has to be uh, inspected by a VA approved. Yeah, mm -hmm. the VA appraisal, which is actually a, an inspection. Yeah. Right. A few other things, exactly. Gotcha. So, specifying which one it is, is, is big here, okay? And it's not so much that the, the buyers, well, they, what does it matter? It's... For the sellers, it does. And let's say all things being equal, you are selling your home. Right. You get three offers. Cash offer, conventional offer, FHA offer. All three of them are the exact same price. Right. Which one would you take? I would want the conventional. I would go with the cash first. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah the cash. cash, you have no right. appraisals. For they can close fast. Yeah. It's less expensive for all parties involved. That's just, let's go with cash. Yeah, but now, exactly, now you're yeah. stuck between the two, a conventional and a VA or an FHA. Mm -hmm. Most popular are going to be the conventional and FHA. All things being equal, you'll go with the conventional, followed by the FHA, followed by the VA. Okay. It's a sad, sad world when a VA benefit is actually a penalty, but in a market like this where appraisals are issues, repairs are issues, it's a little tougher. Okay. And the VA person might have to sweeten their offer just a little bit. Okay? Yeah. So, all right, but that's, that's, does that all make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Okay, um, now 2J, line 100. This is the big one as a buyer's agent. Concessions, yeah. okay, and we could, we could spend an hour on concessions. I don't, oh, yeah. we're already 8 o'clock, so I don't want to keep everybody here. Um, oh. Concessions fast. are, concessions are the same thing, okay? If you're going to offer 340, okay? 340 clean is 340 clean. You're not asking the seller to pay, pay anything, it's just a 340 offer. Okay. If you want to ask the sellers to pay something, throw out a number. What, what do we want the sellers to pay? 5%. That's, is it? That's 3 low. Is about, high. 3 is about 3% is high. 3% okay. concessions is kind of the norm. normal. Okay. So you're okay. looking at roughly 10,000. 10, oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're the seller. Means... Okay. Do you care if somebody's going to offer you 330,000 or they're going to offer you 340 and ask for it back? Does it make any difference to you? Well, because I have to, I have to look at the concession as being taken away from the from asking the, price, and uh, that's what they're and selling. Then the bottom line. Ten thousand yeah. dollars to you, the seller. Is Ten thousand dollars to you, the seller. Mm -hmm. right. Do you care if they're going to take it off the top or if they're going to ask it back and, and closing costs? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Yeah. People don't. People need to understand that as a buyer, concessions. What does the word concession mean? Concede. What does that word mean in general? You're giving something. I'm, I'm kind of caving in. It almost implies that somebody's losing in this mix. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's what a concession is. It's the seller. Okay, we'll go and take care of this for you. Okay. Right? Yeah. Buyers today, a lot of them think, well, they need to pay my closing costs. Why aren't they paying my closing costs? They should pay our closing costs. Yeah. They think it's a natural thing. No, no, no. A clean offer is a clean offer, which means I'm going to offer you this amount, and I'm not going to ask for anything back. You can ask for $10,000 off. That's a clean offer. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's asking price. Yeah. It's a clean offer. 
A concession is asking for money off. It makes it not a clean offer. It actually complicates things. And, but it's all the same to the seller when push comes to shove. Mm -hmm, because it comes down to the bottom line. So yeah, bottom line for, yeah. And yeah. what it boils down yeah. to for the buyer, because it doesn't matter to the seller, is would you rather have less financed, right, and just have a clean offer, pay all your closing yeah. costs, yeah. or would you rather, technically, you're paying these closing costs. You are, but you're going to finance them. Um, okay, so would you rather come to, to closing with no money out of pocket, and do that, right? Right. What the problem is, they want to come in lower offer and yeah, ask for yeah, concessions. Yeah. Okay, it, that's a tough yeah, sale. Yeah. You you might be able to with the right seller, but that's when it, they need to think of. Okay, this is three percent. This is three percent. Now we're asking for six percent off. When you run comps, your average home is selling for two percent of asking within ninety eight percent of asking price. And then whether home. or not you're financing three forty or three thirty can make a big difference as well. Oh, yeah. Or as if they want, well. if they want. They could ask a full asking price and then go on top and get all their closing costs paid for it if they want. And the seller, it's still it's still a full asking price. It seems like, but we're paying ten thousand dollars more. No, no, no. You're not paying your closing costs. The sellers are paying your closing costs. And it's getting the right perspective, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not saying that we're not going to try to get what we can. Yeah. But the buyers need to understand that everything is money. And everything uh -huh. boils down to the bottom line to, to the sellers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've already, I was, my husband and I was talking about, maybe we can talk about like 11% or not, because I was thinking 5% and then the 6 that we have to pay for fees and everything. Yeah, it's it's about 90% total. Yeah. 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 Okay. 29. <laughs> yep. Alright. Okay, and then um, next is the appraisal. Now, it can or cannot be part of the concessions, <laughs> as you can see there, um, line 112. So usually, I always have the buyer pay for everything, uh, uh, like the appraisal, because the sellers don't have any contact with anybody. It's just going to complicate the closing settlement statement. Mm -hmm. So just have the buyer pay for it. it and then this usually takes place at the end of the inspection or when the binzer quote unquote has been accepted, or at least it can I go have both ways. Found and on a typical it, transaction, they'll okay. wait because they can't. Yeah. You're right. Usually they won't want the buyer to pay an extra 500 bucks yeah. until they know that they're going to proceed with the home. Mm -hmm. But you know, Because they're already paying for the appraisal and now they, I mean appraisal, excuse the inspection. me, the inspection. Yeah. And so no then they have to pay for the appraisal and that's why I think most of them wait until that part has right. been taken care of before they invest the yeah. You know, $500. If you're trying to do a, a speedy closing, or for example, if you're in Black Canyon City, rural area, you could be waiting two weeks on an appraisal. So they'll probably order it right off the bat, trying mm -hmm. and hoping that it's still going to be done in time. Mm -hmm. We've had several in rural uh, rural areas that we've had to delay closing for nothing but waiting on an appraisal. And this is where it's interesting because a VA appraisal that sticks for six months. FHA2. Right. Whereas FHA2? the others are 60, aren't the other 60 days? It's a snapshot. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like you yeah. yeah. Okay. Like you can close on a conventional loan, turn around the next day and have your home and your appraised and it'll probably appraise for more. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, if you refi your home, um, it's always, it almost always appraised for higher than the original purchase. Okay. Think about it. Are you the person loaning $300,000 yeah. or are you the person that's going to give $30,000? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very true. Very I'd be more conservative. Yeah. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so appraisal cost. There you go. Okay, so title and escrow. Next one. You are going to have a title partner. Okay, we have worked with Trish here at Security Title for so long, and she's awesome. Um, but have somebody. Your buyers aren't going to know people. Right? Most of the time, they're not going to know an escrow officer. So have somebody in hand that you can, that you can make them feel good about. Okay. There's and it's even besides there's there's, there's a lot of good companies out there, but yeah. inside each company there are good and bad escrow officers. Mm -hmm. So take it to the person themselves. Okay. 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 Um yeah, like well, I don't, easy. I'll use the guys use. Alright. So uh okay, so um once you're through that, uh I don't, know how, I don't know how much longer you guys want to do this. Yes. Well, you don't have um, a whole lot left, babe, so... Okay, so the next part is, um, let's go down to the disclosures 
Okay. So as um, as a buyer, this is where you're, the next part you're really going to want to talk to them about. Um, pretty much the spuds. That's what they're going to get provided. The next part is the insurance claims history. That's going to be provided. Um, lead based paint. If it's a property built before 1978, that's you know it'll be provided. Uh, you always do 173 because nobody really has any packets and information about the lead based paint. If you happen to have somebody who owned the home since 1978, go for it. <laughs> okay. But most people purchased their home probably within the last five or six years. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. So uh, that's one of those fluffy, you know, they will provide you all this stuff. So you're going to know if there were any insurance claims. You know, you're going to get the history of the property within five days. It's going to be great. So, yep. And okay. title, and title provides all that. What? Right? Not those no, two. No, no, those no. And, and what's cool is if you have a seller's agent who's top on top of it, the spuds is already going to be in the documents as well as that clue. I mean, it just okay. helps to have that information. Yeah. So if you're the, a seller's agent, consider that okay. because then it helps the buyer have that information already. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. go through that when we go through your yeah. uh, listing presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. We try to be good agents. <laughs> okay, so um, the next part that you would definitely want to make sure your clients are aware of is the condition of the property. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, the moment you submitted your offer, that's how they have to keep it. Mm -hmm. Okay, they can make it better, but they definitely can't make it worse. Mm -hmm. Okay, if the power water on, power water have to stay on. If there's um, all those blinds, shades, you know, uh, if there's no holes in the walls, no stains on the floor, that's the way it needs to stay. Okay, and. Um, Pretty much that uh, if there's any changes, they have to let you know immediately, uh, and that may or may not break this break the sale. Um, when it comes to acts of God, what was it within seventy five percent? Okay, yeah. so we we had a situation where you know we had accepted a, a binzer my seller had, and then we had a massive storm come through and it totally messed up a part of a roof that had to be replaced. And What's stuff. the so, I'm sorry. Oh, I that's the buyer's that. information and the seller's response. So inspection. Okay. Buyer's inspection. Yeah. The buyer's, I mean, buyer's, buyer's inspection. Buyer's inspection notice, seller's yeah. response. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I hear you say that. Like, yeah, that's the formal that's response. Yeah. Not uh, a car. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like panel. What does panel mean? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, um, so pretty much that's the condition that has to stay in. Now, come into the due diligence period, that's the 10 days that we, that we talked about, right? Okay. And this is where, as you're re conveying this to your buyer, it's like, okay, during your 10 days, these are the items that typically people will want to check out. So if you haven't thought about it, these are some good items. Square feet, um, if there's termites or not, if it's in a flood hazard, um, stuff like that, okay? And then on top of that, you mentioned the buyer's advisory, because this is yeah. so, that's yeah. so many yeah. good things, okay? Okay. And... Um, then you go down to insurance, okay, you're going to get the insurance claims history, and so you're going to get that stuff, um, and it's also good, most people have car insurance, they might have renter's insurance, I would always have them check with their insurer too, okay. so they can get from theirs, yeah. okay? Now, um, for us here in the valley, most are on sewer, sewer's not a big deal for most people. Okay, septic completely changes everything. They have to get an inspection. They have to do all kinds of stuff. So that's where this isn't really, yeah. So this isn't necessarily if sewer connection is material matter. It's not necessarily pertaining to us with normal sewers. It's pertaining to them, and that's really where where it boils down. Okay, you got your swimming pool, which we talked about. Barriers, kids, windows. I mean, there's a lot of stuff there. Okay, now anything that's highlighted, all caps. That's probably important, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so you'll probably definitely want to stop and explain this to your client. And there's three of these throughout, okay? okay. So buyer acknowledgement. Buyer recognizes, acknowledges, and agrees that brokers are not qualified nor licensed to conduct due diligence with respect to the premises or the surrounding area. Buyers instruct to consult with qualified licensed professionals to assist in buyer's due diligence efforts because conducting due diligence with respect to the premises and the surrounding area is beyond the scope of the broker's expertise and licensing. Buyer expressly releases a whole harmless brokers from liability for any defects or conditions that could have been discovered by inspection and investigation. Okay, number one, telling them to do what? Have a get professional inspection. inspection. Mm -hmm. Number one, absolutely get it done by the professional. Yeah. We are professionals at real estate. This is saying, what do we do? We walk them through the process of buying and selling a home. I don't care which home you pick, 
right. I'm going to walk you through the process. Right. And I'm going to give you the yeah. best deal on that home too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They can choose whatever home they want. Yeah. I don't know, it could be Bob Smith, Susie Smith. I mean, it doesn't matter, it could be anybody, right? So that's why we can't say anything about the house. That's why we help them get in contact. Is Do you care about ACs? I have a great AC guy, let's talk to him. Oh, you, you're worried about termites? Let's get this termite person out there, okay. right? Oh, you want to know what kind of cactus that is? Here's a landscaper for you. Okay. Okay? Yeah. We weren't the experts. We know the experts. Gotcha. Okay? okay. So make sure, you make them feel good with that. It's like, no, I, I've never seen this home before, and you guys might turn around and sell it in four months. You, somebody else, who knows, you know? Right. It's, it's one of those things. So just have fun with it. And... I always talk about the fact that when you walk up to a home, it's amazing the questions you get asked. Okay, um, where's the pool? Uh, I don't know. Well, let's find out. You know, this complex is huge. Let's go find out. You know, and then we'll go find a person that's lived in this complex for twenty years and be like, show us around. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then you then you have like, oh, what kind of I I love what kind of tree is that? I have no clue. <laughs> it's a pretty one. Right. It's purple. <laughs> you know? yeah. Right. It's like, okay, so then but I call my landscaper, I call my landscaper and he tells me, yeah. you know, that's what we do. Okay. Okay. Right. So the ex inspection period notice, what you need to know about this is the bins are the buyer's inspection notice and seller's response. Right. Once you submit it, you're done. Okay. If your client submits it on the second day of, of a 10 day inspection period, guess what? You it now can. had a two day inspection period. You are accepting whatever you're putting on this. This is saying we're accepting the property, we're declining the property, or we're asking the sellers to make repairs. Okay. Those are the three options. And that comes back, not an addendum, but a does that oh, well, a on, on the Windsor. No, it's, it's its own document. Oh, okay. uh -huh. yep. Oh, okay. yep. yep. And the seller can accept or not accept that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. They can yeah. accept, uh, not accept, or throw out another alternative. Yeah. Okay. Now, what's cool is once we have submitted, then the buyer has sent the, that binzer back for the seller's response, then that releases us from the 10 days, and there's now a new time frame oh, for good. now the seller to respond back to you. Okay. Oh, that's great. Now, here's, here's the, what's great is because your buyers will always want a, a, a licensed professional, you know, I need a licensed electrician, I need a licensed this, you know, a contractor, whatever it might be, okay? Here we go. Line B, again, all highlighted. All highlighted, I got it. 278. <laughs> if seller agrees in writing to correct items, this proof seller shall correct the items, complete any repairs in a workmanlike manner, Workman. and deliver <laughs> any pay receipts evidencing the corrections and repairs within three days, etc. Okay? Pretty much a competent professional. Under no circumstances does it say a licensed electrician or a uh, licensed contractor. It's a competent professional. Okay. okay. There's no rule saying that Grandpa Joe can't fix it given that he is qualified to fix it. Okay. You know, if he's willing to uh, give a receipt and warrant his work, then there's no difference between, you know. Because in our bins are response back to the seller, I'm going to use that word competent. Professional, okay. you know, because you know, Mike with his handyman say like I'm the seller. Yeah, I know somebody who can actually do the work or whatever. And right. so, yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of handymen are way better than contractors. Yes, <laughs> yes, a little more affordable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the um, last like four things really fast. So um, line two eighty seven. This is a big one. Okay. If if your buyers do not respond on the tenth day, guess what happens? Line 287. Cancellation of this contract. No, that's not expired. They are accepting the property as. Or cancellation of this contract within the specified time period shall conclusively be deemed buyer's election to proceed with the transaction without correction of any disapproved items. If the buyers don't cancel along the way at, at the end of closing, they're going to be buying a house. That's that. Okay. They put in a contract, all things being equal, if, unless they say otherwise, you're going to be closing on that date and things will proceed. It's up to them to cancel at any moment. Okay. Okay? So, during, yeah. yeah during the t if they don't respond on the 10th day, the, the sellers can be like, darn, that's awesome. We don't have to make any repairs. Let's go. You know? <laughs> okay. It's, that's basically it. You're accepting it as is. Done. All right. All right. So, 
you can respawn any day, any day prior and cancel, do whatever you want. But if you don't respond, and if it's no, and pay attention to that day if they ride on in the due diligence, because on a cash sale it could be seven days, it could be five days. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's an important one there. Next one is um, home warranty. I always put this on for my clients. The sellers don't buy it. I mean, they don't necessarily order it unless we ask them to. You know, it's up to you if you want the sellers to pay for it. But as far as a home warranty, I always put it on. And if possible, I will have the sellers pay for it. Okay? Um, it's one of those things. And plus, too, it helps when it comes to the warranties. Uh, not warranties, but repairs. Okay. If they know that they're getting a home warranty and the sellers are providing home warranty, they know that the home is in better shape. And it's funny because without the warranty, they fear everything's broken and they'll ask for everything yeah. to get fixed. With the warranty, they'll assume things are better and won't ask for as much. But right. see, that's the other thing, too. Mind. When yeah. the lender yeah. comes back, you know, and I represent the seller, I'll say, now, remember, you know, our AC is covered under the home warranty oh, and okay. stuff. And so then then the dollar sign comes down because then they okay. it, you know. So it's like there's some good things here. Right, right. Okay. Have that home okay, so you have your 10-day inspection period. You have your appraisal, which the lenders are going to send the people out to do their stuff to make sure it appraises. If it doesn't appraise, that's a renegotiation tool. Obviously, a buyer can't be required to buy something and overpay for it. Okay, so you renegotiate or walk away. Okay. Your CCNRs. The CCNRs is your packet from your HOA. It's the covenants, conditions, and restrictions for the property. <laughs> I was like, I know that. I know okay. that. Okay. Okay. And let's Same say man. covenants, conditions, and restrictions. <laughs> now that, let's say you are Sammy the fortune teller, okay. okay, and throughout the rest, throughout the day, you have people coming in and out of your house, parked in front of your house all day, 20, 50, 20 30 people coming in throughout the day, okay, okay. let's say your HOA doesn't like people parking on the street, yeah. or they actually have a restriction that you're not allowed to have a business operating from your home, mm -hmm. that would be a valid reason to cancel, that's your livelihood. So your CCNRs, the covenants, conditions, and restrictions from that HOA, that is outside your 10-day inspection period, okay? They're supposed to send it to you within 10 days. Oh. And then you have five days to review that packet, okay? During that time, if you find out anything that is not good, you can cancel, okay? okay? So outside of your 10-day inspection period, you have your CCNRs, you have your appraisal, Okay, you have your loan contingency, which we kind of talked about in general, which if they, your lender for some reason can't deliver on this loan after providing you the LSU, that's not your fault, they can cancel. Um, okay, now your final one is right here, your walkthrough. Okay, if they did not keep the property in the condition they were supposed to, you can cancel. If they, if they didn't repair, uh, do the repairs and the time allotted, you can cancel. If uh, the act of God happened and it's something just, you can, you can move on. So that is your final out, okay? The first 10 days, and then you have your appraisal a few days later. You have your CCNRs a few days later. Then you have your final walkthrough, but the three days before you close. That's your final out if need be, okay? And if, seriously, it needs to be in that same condition. You know, it's not going to be... Hopefully, you know, nobody did anything fishy. The likelihood of anybody doing anything fishy is so small. But push comes to shove. If they didn't make the repairs, yeah. you don't have to, you know. So that's that one. All right. And then um, the remedies, the next part is just if things go wonky, this is how we handle it. You know, it, first we'll hit them with a cure period. And if they don't fix it by then, then they're uh, by the end of the cure period, then they're in breach. And if they don't fix it then, then we could take it up to the next people, which is the ADR. And then eventually we may end up in court if things go that awry. But 10 years of business, never had to go beyond the cure notice. <laughs> so let's hopefully go there. Okay? So then the next part is none. Hopefully less is more. Okay? As your broker, do not write if you don't have to. This, was, this contract is written by hundreds of years of case law by professional lawyers. <laughs> Just because we have the ability to write on a contract doesn't mean we should. Okay. okay. Well, okay. Although maybe the only exception is like, you know, um, uh, close of escrow to be on or before. Yeah. Like okay. don't just, people want to feel important. People want to, people like writing illegalese. 
Because I don't. Do okay? If you don't have to, don't. Mm -hmm. You know? But it, there will absolutely be times we write it. But don't try to make yourself feel important and don't try to write something that doesn't need to be. Okay. okay? Gotcha. All right, so, but never leave it blank. That's why we write none in there, okay? okay? You don't want somebody to come in after the fact and be able to change stuff. Gotcha. Okay? Gotcha. All right, okay. so then um, page nine, this one is what I call the definitions page, okay? Uh, risk of loss, what we use Arizona, how you calculate timelines, what compensation is, you know, all that good fun, okay? Then right here we come down to 8N, which is the next, all caps, and this, not all caps, but all highlighted, and this actually breaks down the, the things that weren't necessarily broken down in the other. It's the same idea, but it's an itemized list. Rent rolls, value, boundaries, regulations, insurance, price, wow. sanitation, roof, wood, infestation, building codes. It's the same stuff. We yeah. don't know the physical property. Yeah. We didn't live here. This wasn't our property. So we can't be held responsible. We will help you find out all this stuff. Okay. But this is why you have both seller and buyer initials. Yep. Yeah. All right. It makes the sellers know they got to disclose. And so the I go through this with the buyer. Buyer does all of his, mm -hmm. and then, or does it come with the seller? When you take this contract to the buyer, has the seller already done their initials? Yeah. Nope. Nope. No, no, no. The buyer, the buyer, you and the buyer will handle your stuff, and then you're going to take it to the seller's agent or email it to yeah. them, uh -huh. and you're okay. going to sell the crap out of your client to them to get the seller to accept. Okay. Because four thirty-seven tells when that seller's agent has to respond by. Yep, and typically okay. there, what is the time? If it's a normal seller, how much time do you give them to respond to your offer? I normally give mine like 24 hours. So in other words, you know, if it's 8 o'clock tonight, I'll say 8 o'clock tomorrow evening. And unless it's a company like a bank, mm -hmm. we work on weekends, you don't need to, if it's Friday, no, no, no. You don't want to give them until Monday because a lot of people can look at that home over that weekend and yeah. they could receive three or four more offers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If, if you're going to give them the offer on Friday at noon, give them to like Saturday at noon. Okay. <laughs> and I love AP that says, you know, there are 10 pages to this. Make sure. Exactly. Get just the thing, you know. All right. Exactly. Yeah. And so if all goes well on uh, that final page there, you'll see that they uh, sell their acceptance. Right. right? But then notice right below, there's a box. You don't offer ideally reject it. Well, that is oh, oh, the counter offer. Exactly. Yeah. So either of these two, mm -hmm. that either they rejected it or they mm -hmm. countered back. It, that's a very important checkbox. Yes. Yes. You never want to write a counter offer and then forget to check that box. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Because otherwise it reverts to. They the just accepted job. that offer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's a very very important box. So he a broker on behalf of a buyer. So your name is always going to be there. On yours, yep. Mm -hmm. Not my name. No, yours no, will be. This oh, will mine. Be this yours is, this is my template. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you come in on um, was it session three or four, mm -hmm. we'll create your template. That's yeah. what we do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. This is so cool. I'm so yeah. excited. Yeah. yeah. Oh, some of these we didn't even go over. Like the market Well, we went over them, but mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. And so this, um, I'm going to read through all of this again. Yep. And so you'll see right here, this is where it says represent it. buyer, yeah. and then give the ability to buyer to show your listings. Yeah. And then that would be the sellers box. Mm -hmm. Pretty yeah. simple, that one. Yeah. Okay. I like that. And then this one's pretty easy. Because when we, yeah, when we when we help set down. you up, you know, with your templates and uh -huh. stuff, Sammy, this is where the Benzer comes in, and so we'll walk you through the Benzer so you actually see the right. different parts and stuff. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Then the buyer broker, that one's pretty cool too because mm -hmm. in here it also ties you can to be the source of referrals for a lot of other types of properties too. Oh, yeah, that's cool. It's like, oh, you're, you might be looking for an industrial property? Oh, okay. But see, <laughs> what I love about this is that I have a specified time where I have that relationship with my buyer. Yeah. And this is where, you know, if I have them sign this, this is how I'll get paid no matter what. Because they can go with somebody else, but that's right here. Yeah. What, um, commercial is so What if I, uh, found myself walking into a beauty salon and said, oh, maybe it's a beauty. Yeah. Oh, you Yeah. Yeah. I had a church. <gasps> 
I'm in, uh, the, church, <laughs> the church that I'm helping with, Lizette, um, they've been in their location now nine years, right? Wow. And really? And it just and it just dawned on them that they have spent over a million dollars <gasps> in rent in the last nine years. And they could have oh, bought a property. Uh, yep. And so that's where it's like, whoa, that, that, oh, that, uh, is, yeah. <laughs> Even though this was kind of like, I know, and stuff, you have our phones. I appreciate stuff, that. So.